Let's tie Roy Christie's reverse parachute emerger. We begin using a Tiemco 2L6BL. This happens to be in a size 16. I'll tie these down to a size 20, even 22, and up to probably a 14. Third I'm using is Uni 17 knot Trico thread in white. It only comes in white. Tie it in at the eye. I've got a piece of boar bristle. I love this stuff. <laughs> I actually got it off. I get it off of a um, shaving brush. It comes with naturally split tails with that taper. <laughs> and it is rugged. It, it, it's heavy duty. It's not breaking off. It's the only thing that is maybe if it dries out and it'll crumble, but I have yet to have that issue with it. Tie it in at the eye, wrap it up to the front of the hook. Now you'll notice I'm tying, <clears throat> and the reason it's called a reverse parachute is because the eye of the hook sets in the water. So what that means is you just put your floatant only on the top portion of the fly and the butt end sits in the water and you don't use any kind of floating on your tippet. In fact, you need it stripped so that the fly presents well. And that's why I like this fly so much is because of the way that it pre presents. Now I've taken another, a second, set, second spool and I've got a piece of tailing material from a Coq de Leon that's made of Coq de Leon. And I've stripped off the feathers, the uh, barbs, and I'm just using the stem. And I like it because it comes, it, 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 it's got its own segmentation after you wrap it. And it's very strong. Now I tie in that stem from the Coctelion. And I'm going to add just a touch. It doesn't need it. But I add a little bit of super glue on the base. And what it does is just make it stronger. Trim out that, X, that tag of thread. And that's my super glue. Just need barely a drop. Now I begin to wrap concentric circles. And what's nice, because it is a coctelion, it's a natural feather, it tapers naturally. So you don't need to build, really need to build up the thread and give it a taper because the stem itself is already tapered and it gets fatter. Not a lot, but it gets fatter as it gets larger down, down towards the uh, stem. You just right wrap tight concentric circles wraps and just bring it up to the bend and tie it off. Now they have dark CDL and they have normal CDL. And this just happens to be the dark. The only other thing you need to worry about this is sometimes it'll get a little brittle on the older pieces, but I haven't had that issue yet. I had a piece of CDL that I'd left out for close to a year or two and then when I went to wrap it, it it cracked on me but that doesn't happen if you have an issue with that just wet it down a bit and tie off that stem now you can see that segmentation in that CDL those light and dark bands I think that's just perfect especially for an emerger and especially for the huge uh, midge hatches that happen out at Aurora Res in the spring. I'm going to trim off that excess uh, Cochlea with my nippers. You'll find these nippers, they're um, 
inverted uh, nail clippers. So they've got a convex blade or a slanted blade on them. And I got them at Walgreens. Just do a search on nail clippers at Walgreens. And they're under four bucks. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of marker. This happens to be a uh, Spanish olive. Just a quick swipe. And see, it also takes the marker extremely well. Now here's the touch, I'm just gonna wet it down. I'm gonna coat it with UV resin, but then I'm gonna wipe the majority of it off. And I just wanted to give a slight sheen and also to give it a, a protective coating. See, so I'm just using my bodkin to, to wipe off the excess. I hit it with my torch. I like the way the stem looks because it is, for me, the, the midges that I see, they've got really thin, long bodies. And that's what we mess up, I think, a lot on midges, is that the body has a tendency to get a little thick. Not in this case. Look at that sheen, look at that segmentation. You cannot beat that. All right, so I've tied off my thread. I've got a piece of 6X fluorocarbon tippet material, and it's going to be the loop that the parachute is built around. And what basically what you're doing, you create a loop out of 6X material, you wrap your hackle around it, you thread it through that loop, and then you collapse that loop, and you create, you create your parachute. Now you have, you need to have, since you're going to be collapsing that loop and pulling on it rather hard, that's what all those wraps are for, is to make sure that that base does not pull out. So I've created a loop, and now I'm just, also I have to tie that down also. And you'll see that I will wrap at least seven times, six, seven times to really nail down the other leg of that loop. Now my buddy Roy Christie, he can do this without a, uh, a, um, a hang tool. I'm not as coordinated. <laughs> So I've got my hang tool. You can see I'm putting it up in the right hand corner and I'm gonna put some tension on it. And now I'm gonna tie in my hackle. And this is just done hackle, no biggie. Now I'm gonna put the concave side down, which is the flat side. Tie it off really well. And I'm going to wrap anywhere from 8 to 12 wraps, just depending on how dense I want that, that parachute to be or that wing to be. Um, I don't you can also do two colors or three colors, but I just choose, I'm just doing one for our purpose here, but you just take two, you can do two, you know, do a parachute atoms and do a brown and a, and a grizzly. 
So you see, I've wrapped that and I've gone through that loop twice and I'm pulling on one leg of that loop that I created for the parachute. And see how it collapses down? I love that. That's a great, that's, that just, I just think that's the coolest thing in what it does. Now I'm pulling it just to make sure that loop doesn't come apart, and it does not. You could, you can let uh, a piece of head, uh, a little bit of head cement or CA drip down the middle of that pulse and nail it down, but I've never had a problem with it coming apart at that loop. And I'm going to cut the excess off of that other leg of that loop. Now, I've got some uh, um, CDC, and I'm opening up the thread so that I can split it, yes, split 17 knot thread, and slip in some CDC, and then wrap it underneath it to give it, make it look like legs. I like that really, oh, messy look, I guess, for the legs and the wing, because that's what a, a merger looks like when, it, when it's emerging. So I've got it in a clip. I'll slip that into that split thread for a loop. And trim a bit. And then spin to create the loop. Now I'm going to take that dubbing loop and wrap it around the base of my parachute and that'll be my legs. The only thing I have to watch out for a bit is that it doesn't trap some of that parachute but even then it's, it's pretty easy to wrap this. But you will need a large pair, the large pair of whip finishers in order to finish off the fly. Take my whip finishers and wrap. Oh, I'll do three, three to six wraps. And you can see why you need that large whip finisher so to clear the uh, parachute. And make an adjustment and just tidy things up a bit. So, two things to note. The parachute, you just put your floatant on the parachute and then you put no, no floatant on the tippet. And then the butt, causing the butt end to sink down into the water. And that's my uh, reverse parachute immersion.